Patrick Mahomes has the strongest arm. Dalvin Cook is the fastest player. Khalil Mack is the strongest. Actually, I just lied to you. Those players were all second place. Let's begin. This is only my second video on the new channel. So if you haven't subscribed yet, do me a favor and hit that red subscribe button. We are so close to 20,000 subscribers. Let's try to hit it today. Also hit that notification bell to join Nodi Gang. So every time I upload a hot fire video, you're not going to miss it. The tallest player. It's Dan Skipper. Who? He's not a good player, but somehow he won a Super Bowl with the Patriots. So I can't really talk trash. The shortest player. It's a tie between Tariq Cohen and Darren Sproles. According to Google, they're both 5'6", but I don't believe in ties. Tariq is about one centimeter shorter, and the Saints defense made a short joke right in his face. So you win the tiebreaker, Tariq. You're the shortest. The fastest player is Dalvin Cook, just over 22 miles per hour on one of his runs. But we all know he's not the fastest. I mean, Tyreek Hill is jogging and still runs 20 miles per hour. When he was younger, he used to run against wild dogs. I'm not making that up. I don't care what the technicalities are, Tyreek Hill is the fastest player. The slowest player, Tom Brady. When he was young, he ran a 5-2-8 40-yard dash. Now that he's like 40 years old, he runs in slow motion. Arm strength slash throwing power, depends what you call it. This is the toughest one to choose. For years, it's been Matthew Stafford. He's always had the strongest arm in the league, but after hurting his shoulder a few times, it's not the same. It's between Josh Allen and Patrick Mahomes. Mahomes used to be a pitcher in baseball, and when you're a pitcher, you can throw the ball hard. But you know what Mahomes hasn't done? Thrown the ball 80 yards. You know who has thrown the ball 80 yards? Josh Allen. There are clips of him throwing the ball 77 yards and 80 yards. No one else in the NFL can do that. Not Stafford, not Mahomes. Oh, what about Aaron Rodgers? Not Aaron Rodgers. The answer is Josh Allen. The weakest arm. Who has a noodle arm? The answer was Colt McCoy. He literally had the weakest arm maybe in the history of the league, but he's not a starter anymore. So the new king of the noodle arm is Andy Dalton. Andy, if you're listening, a uh, man, big fan, but get to the gym. Passing accuracy. It's between Drew Brees and Ryan Tannehill. This is so interesting because Drew Brees has the number one completion percentage, 75%. Unreal. Ryan Tannehill has the number two completion percentage, 71. But check this out. Ryan Tannehill averages about 10 yards per throw. That's the most in the NFL and way higher than Drew Brees. So for this season, it's almost a tie. But I'm going to give it to Drew Brees. Because Ryan Tannehill has been playing really well the last few months. And Drew Brees has been playing like this for the last few decades. Deep pass accuracy. Russell Wilson or Aaron Rodgers? You think this is a tough decision? But spoiler alert, it's not. Aaron Rodgers, you're having an amazing season. But you're second place. Russell Wilson can have a bad offensive line. He could have puppies at wide receiver. And he would still be getting 60-yard completions every game. We gotta give Wilson the credit he deserves. Which quarterback has the best throw on the run? Lamar Jackson is not the best. He's not even top three. It is Patrick Mahomes. He literally invented the sidearm pass for his throws on the run. He is number one, only a little bit better than Russell Wilson. The strongest player in the NFL. My guy Daniel Jones is not even in the top 100. <laughs> it is between Aaron Donald, who bench presses 500 pounds, J.J. Watt, who is just a beast, and Quentin Nelson, the left guard of the Colts. Is it a coincidence that the strongest players are also the best players? So Aaron Donald is second place, J.J. Watt is third place, 
And that means Quentin Nelson is, nope, he's fourth place. It's none of these guys. The strongest player is Vita Veya. This guy is a truck and he happens to be good at football. The weakest player, Taylor Gabriel. 5'7", 168 pounds. He's tiny. Is he Tariq Cohen tiny? Almost, he's one inch taller, but he's a lot lighter. The best hands. I'm talking about catching the ball, not like whose hands look the best. Oh, it's Odell Beckham Jr. He did that one-handed catch like three years ago. Yeah, exactly, three years ago. When he gets more than three receptions a game, then you could talk to me. The second answer is, oh, it's DeAndre Hopkins. Now that's a respectable answer. He didn't drop the ball once all of last year. He is definitely number two. But everybody is forgetting about one man. And his name is Larry Fitzgerald. In his long career, Larry Fitzgerald has more tackles than he has drops. He has the best hands, case closed. The heaviest player, the big boys. And his name is Trent Brown. But how heavy is he? Oh, he's real heavy. He's 380 pounds heavy. How can he move at 380? And he was a big reason the Patriots won the Super Bowl. Trent Brown is a legit star tackle. The lightest player in the NFL. Of all sports, this is not the one you want to be light. But the lightest player is Taylor Gabriel. So short times light equals weak. Taylor, the good news is you're the best in two categories. The bad news is they're probably the worst categories. Who is the best tackler in the NFL? There's only two options. It's Luke Keekly or Bobby Wagner. They each get like 15 tackles a game. But when we're talking about pure tackling ability, it's Luke Keekly. If Luke Keekly sees you, he's gonna tackle you. Who's got the hardest hit stick in the NFL? It is Keanu Neal from the Atlanta Falcons. Not only does he have the hardest hit, but he's also the most physical player in the league. If you're Taylor Gabriel and you just caught a pass and you see Keanu Neal running, you fall on the floor and pray that he doesn't hit you. Catch in traffic. DeAndre Hopkins and Michael Thomas. Michael Thomas is having the better season, over 1,800 yards, but he gets open a lot. Drew Brees is a master and finds Michael Thomas open. DeAndre Hopkins is the one making the toughest catches, the impossible catches, the catches where when you see the picture, you look at it and think, there's no way, there's no way he caught that ball. But yes, yes he did, because DeAndre Hopkins has the best catch in traffic. Route running! It was Antonio Brown for years, by far the best route runner, but he's not in the NFL right now, so we can't mm. say it's him. So next up, it's T.Y. Hilton. When you're 5'10", and the only good wide receiver on your team, you have to be an elite route runner. Interceptions! And I'm talking about quarterbacks. It's Jameis Winston, and you're not gonna believe these numbers. Second place is Phillip Rivers, and he has 18 interceptions. First place, Jameis Winston, has 28 interceptions thrown. How do you throw 28 interceptions in 15 games? When you have Jameis Winston on your team, he's either gonna be the best thing that's ever happened to you, or the worst thing. Who has the most fumbles? Last video, I was talking about Josh Allen. 14 fumbles, way too much. But only one player has more fumbles than Josh Allen. And his name is Daniel Jones, or what I like to call Eli Manning 2.0. I mean, just look at them, they're the same person. 16 fumbles, that's more than one fumble per game. That is unacceptable. But it's okay because he's a rookie. You guys remember Lamar Jackson last season? He had so many fumbles, we thought it wouldn't work out. Now he's gonna win MVP. Highest vertical. Oh, you think it's Zeke. You think it's Ezekiel Elliott. That's a great guess, but it's wrong. It's someone else on the Cowboys. Byron Jones. He broke the world record in his NFL combine. 44 and a half inch vertical. That's a higher vertical than Michael Jordan. Football IQ. 
Drew Brees or Tom Brady. If you have a high football IQ, you don't get sacked. You throw the ball away, you avoid it. So it should be Tom Brady, right? He's got to be number one. Actually, not this season. The highest football IQ is Drew Brees. He's only thrown three interceptions this season. He's only gotten sacked 12 times. That's less than one sack per game. That's almost impossible. When he calls hike, he's calculating every possibility, every movement, and almost every time he makes the right decision. Best moves, and I'm talking about jukes, spin moves, stiff arms, Saquon Barkley. He has moves we've never seen before. His legs are like tree trunks. The most versatile player, someone who can play different positions. It's Taysom Hill, the backup quarterback for the Saints. Sometimes he runs the ball, sometimes he passes the ball, sometimes he plays wide receiver. One of these days, he might kick a field goal. Second place would be Mohamed Sanu. I just wanted to give him that credit. The most durable player. Someone who doesn't get injured. It was Eli Manning, but now he's not a starter. Now it is Philip Rivers. He makes so many mistakes, but I gotta say, this guy is built like a brick wall. Philip Rivers once tore his ACL and played a game five days later. The toughest player. It's Matthew Stafford. He is the Kobe of the NFL. Wait, isn't that the same as being durable? No, Stafford still gets injured. He just plays through it. Not too long ago, he dislocated his shoulder, came back in the game and led a game winning drive the most clutch player in the NFL. You're down six points, two minutes left. Which quarterback do you want? It's between Drew Brees and Aaron Rodgers. If it's the regular season, Drew Brees. If it's the playoffs, Aaron Rodgers. But if I had to pick one, I would say Drew Brees. Kicking power, Greg Zerloin. He's got the strongest leg in the NFL. Kicking accuracy, Justin Tucker, 96%. The best player from every NFL team. That was my last video, go watch it right now. I'll put it somewhere on the screen for you to click. The new video will be next Sunday.